Is it weird to say that I think the whole kit is worth it just for this? Okay, people, welcome back to another model kit build. It's been a while. Today, we're going to build and then do a little review of the action figure that springs forth from all these little parts and pieces of Bandai, Star Wars, The Mandalorian, Beskar Armor, Mandalorian. Now, I'm doing the silver coating version today. I do have, where'd it go? I do have the basic version that's more of a white, and I, I'll pull the sprues out to kind of compare, but I'm only building this. It's essentially the same figure from what I understand but I want to see what the silver one looks like first. And like I said, it's been a while since I've built a model kit, especially a Star Wars one. I tried some Toy Story one, it just wasn't the same. And if you go back to the early days of the channel, it was the Star Wars model kits that really got me kind of rocking and rolling. But I can only do what Bandai puts out, and they haven't put out a lot lately. So when this popped up, it was a surprise for one, and two, it made me excited. I was ready, come on. I got this imported and stuff, but I am hearing people are finding it at Target right now which is crazy. I'm, I'm sure glad I spent the 20 bucks to get these shipped across the sea. Oh, that old familiarity. There's that picture on the front. On the side, all the poses and the different things you can do. Back views, Beskar armor, hands and weapons, cloak, jetpack and Beskar spear, action poses. On the other side, big pretty picture, the little instructions telling you that you need some nippers, small parts, don't put them in your mouth. On the other side, same picture. When we open up the box, there's the sprues. It's not a chromey silver, looks like. It's just shiny. We'll do a quick comparison with this other kit and oh wait it's actually not that different. I thought judging by the promotional images that the, it was going to be more white but it is a gray. You can even see it in the other camera that's without the bright lights. Oh well it's still reflecting isn't it? But like I said armor parts in a shiny silver, uh, the jetpack, top of the helmet. The blaster is in black, the rifle, there's the joints, those should, yeah, those are rubbery. Got the decals or decals. That one's gonna be interesting. That's a lot of decal going over a lot of sculpted detail. Undersuit parts, the cloth, the browns, some blues up here. That doesn't seem as cheese clothy as back in the day. Hopefully this is better than, was it Phasma? They had just the see-through <laughs> cloak thing. And then the instructions. Hmm. I'm gonna get these all separated and out, get the instructions open, get started. I'm not gonna record the whole build, but if I run into snags or something interesting, <laughs> something to throw into the video here, I'll film that. So far, so good. Pretty basic. The two chess pieces, the neck, you got these extra articulation points that are made of a rubbery material, and it has the butterflies in there, which we'll get to with the figure put together, and then the waist piece. Well, the ab piece down below. The first step is build the torso. The second step is put the cape on it, and kind of don't want to, because then there's these little thin pieces for the bandolier too, and it's just gonna be in the way. And it almost feels coated in something. It's not as thin as the old ones. I don't know, that's a weird piece of cloth. And I'd seen this mentioned before. The silver parts, they have this coating on them, but they didn't undergate them. I have a feeling that they did the regular plastic one without the silver first, and this was an afterthought. Kind of a, hey, we can release this twice if we make a silver version, and they didn't change the way it was mounted in the sprues. Where you clip them, it's visible, so you get kind of a dull spot that's not coated. It looks like we fold this and then fold this, these attach here, and bring these, oh, that's gonna be a, <laughs> only have two hands, instructions. Fold it over, and then I have to somehow flip this back up and out of the way without stretching it back. Oh, did I do it? Yeah, look at that. And get it plugged onto here without it falling back off. I guess that flips up and over. It does give it some thickness right there and some bunching around the neck. That's not bad. It's gonna hang kind of flat in the back, but I think we can deal with that. Okay, the E2 and the E3 says, <laughs> make sure not to snip off the the parts that plug together. The top kind of plugs together, but where they come together, you also have to get plugged into here while avoiding the cape to quit jumping around. That's kind of a nightmare. Boy, it almost feels like you're breaking it when you put it in there, but you have to force it. Surprised I didn't stress anything. The cape kind of lays over that, I guess on purpose? Shit, I don't know. I expected the visor to be translucent, smoky, see-through, some kind of material, but it's just a black piece of plastic. So did a good job of hiding the seam on the side instead of straight up the middle. And where you cut it out of the sprue, there's the darker plastic showing through. I put the part on first and then started the decal right here and then weaved it 
up and around each cylinder until I got here and I had some extra. What it meant was put the decal on from the bottom to where when you plug it in, the end of the decals in there. It was just slice the end off. Though. I wasn't going to start over because I, I'm kind of, it, you can see it's off a little, but I'm kind of proud at how good I put that on there. And I'm kind of relieved that it went up and around each one. That, that doesn't look bad at all. Again, it asked for the decal to be put around and I got it on there before anything else popped on. But watch out for those little silver cylinders right there. It's got the blue knee pad. Those are separate pieces. You teeny tiny. Other than that, if you've built a Star Wars action figure model kit before, it's basically the same joint setup. You'll recognize a lot of this once you start putting it together. Wow, and look at that. 10 decals on a part this big kind of like that yeah it's rough but damn these are little tiny things and i'm old it'd probably be easier to get some silver paint either a, a brush or a paint pen or something and just paint the ends but i wanted to do it i wanted to give it a shot and now that i've done it i never want to do it again oh there it is again a lot of decals and what's even worse this time that's the back belt piece so it'll be under the jetpack and behind the cape but i'm gonna do it anyway because I've come this far. Not too bad. I, I get better as I go, which is bad because I got better at the ones that are going to be hidden most of the time. So I kind of messed up the buckle decal, but I have never put this many decals on a model kit <laughs> in my life. The bicep in the sprue is all one piece instead of being two halves that go together. And that plugs on top of the double elbow right there. Putting the jetpack together. There's this piece right here that puts some detail on the bottom of it, but the instructions say you can flip that around and there's a peg hole for a stand that doesn't come with this kit. So if you're wanting in a flying pose, you want to assemble it this way. For the stock of the rifle, the instructions say to push in as far as possible. Easier way is to come all the way back with it and then kind of turn it onto it. Also for the scope, line up the front peg and then push in the back peg because that does most of the holding. I'm pretty much done with the build. We'll get to the figure here in a second. On the sprues, I'm left with a couple of joints, which is pretty common. But then I was wondering what the hell's going on here. And what I realized is that these are Boba Fett parts. Then on the brown sprues, you have his crotch piece, his lower torso, most of the leg. I don't know if it's meant to mix and match. I'd like take the joints from here and use it inside these parts, but then you don't have anything to plug into here. You also need a Boba Fett kit to finish the whole thing. Maybe they threw them in there for options to not waste sprue. I don't know. I, <laughs> customizing. Huh. It's interesting. Okay. I kind of cheated. I didn't realize that decals are supposed to go here too. So I hit it with some liquid chrome, that Molotow. Is that what it's called? Seems like that would be one of the things that they would want to stick decals on before sticking the part on, but I don't think it's in that. I don't know. I did attempt this and it's, it's not bad. You can see the silver edge around it. I may have to mess with it a little bit more. It keeps wanting to raise back up off the edges and it really sticks out against the cleanness of the rest of the body. But getting it all together, it, it, it definitely has those model kit qualities, but still a good looking Mandalorian, I think. It all comes down to the proportions, which has been a problem with some of the existing figures like Figure Wards, Black Series. Don't get me wrong, those aren't bad, but when I take a look at this, I think that actually looks like dude in suit. The Beskar armor pieces aren't quite as chromey as I was expecting or as they built it up to be maybe, but it is definitely a, a shiny silver. When it comes to the model kits, the promotional images are usually professionally painted with all the weathering and all the cracks and then even the armor pieces too. So this having shiny plasticky feel in a lot of places, that's just the, the base model kit. They give you the base colors, you're supposed to work past that, but I don't do that in the videos because that would take way too long. My favorite aspect of model kits though are all the little details that they can get because most things are little itty bitty separate pieces that you put together. The color separations between the bluish grays and the chrome and the browns and I didn't realize it when I was looking at the spruce but there's actually different colors of brown. I thought they were all the same. As you can see the boot is more <laughs> milk chocolatey. Same with this knee pad right here. Same thing with the holster compared to the duller brown of the undersuit. There was a decal for this. I don't know why they didn't make the butt plate a separate silver piece too. Especially after making me do all this little detail work with the cape down. <laughs> I'm going to very rarely see that. And harping on decals one more time, 
I screwed this one up, I think. I got it too high up, and I'll have to do this. But that color, I think I can match with paint, so I'll eventually peel that off. But I'm liking how this one came out, and I, that one's okay. That's <laughs> I thought was going to be the biggest problem one, and it's not terrible. The way the shoulder pads were two pieces come together right on the seam, it's hard to see where it actually went together on both sides. Then I talked about the helmet during the build. Looking at it, you can see that the separation's over there, but if it had been right down the center, it would have been blam, even more in your face. This pouch being separate here on the outside of the leg, same here on the belt, just little things that I hadn't paid attention to with other figures. Like this decal with this digital readout, whatever the hell this is. I never paid attention to that before, and if I had, I've forgotten it by now, but since I had to do that myself, I was like, oh, that's a cool little thing. Perfect world, you'd build the base body and then paint it, weather it, get it dulled down, and then snap on the silver parts. And even though these are coated, it could probably use some, uh, well, some patina maybe? I don't know. It needs just a little bit of finish to separate the pieces out. Like here, you kind of lose the detail in all the silver, like a wash or something, just to put it over the top. But again, model kit. You're supposed to do some paint work after. The cape isn't as terrible as I thought it'd be. Again, it's flat. I may have to try to do something with that. I do like how with the layers, as much of a pain in the ass that was to put together, with the layers it kind of bunches up correctly at the neck. Jumping back to the base colors of the plastic, even the soles of the shoes are slightly different brown than the actual shoes. But again, model kits. It's an action figure, but there's some aspects because it's a model kit that veer too far away for some people. Like most everything is made of the same material. It's a, it's not brittle. I was gonna say that, but it's a harder material it has no give like an action figure. There's no flexing. Because of that, they have to gap things weird. You can't have just a standard ball joint at the shoulder. Same thing at the waist. You're going to get some gaps when you move around the articulation. Then there is the design of the character himself that has these elements that are hard to translate. Like this strap coming around, especially in model kit form, it's a harder material. You go too far and you can hear it snap and that is this back piece kind of coming in and out of the belt. It's not attached anywhere because it can't. It has to be left loose for articulation and sometimes it gets caught up on top of the belt inside, outside, and you'll hear a snap. Did I break something? No, I didn't. And that's the same for the front too. You get too high up, it gets on top of the belt, you gotta kind of work its way back in there. If you've done the model kits before, you're kind of used to this stuff, working around things like that. But if you're new to model kits, all that plus how light they are because they're hollow, it may throw you off a bit. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. Well, it's a model kit. We can take it apart and look at it. And then there's a ball joint at the bottom. You can look up, down, got to kind of bury the helmet into the cloth. Not bad tilt for a helmet. Swivel. That butterfly joint in there comes forward. Ball joint on the outside of that. You can shift down a little bit, raise up, try to get around. It only comes up to about right there. That shoulder pad's just too big. But with that being a ball joint, you do get slight up and down. Rotate it all the way around. Shoulder pad is also on a hinge to come up and out of the way. Swivel right below the bicep. Double elbow comes up to about right there. Slight ball joint at the wrist. Comes in and out, up and down, just a little, and then swivel. Ball joint mid-torso, ball joint at the waist together. There's, uh, there's some problem with the belt too. What happened there is I crunched down and the strap essentially went behind it and popped it off. Arc back, some tilt, some tilt. I guess you could glue that and so it would not pop off at all, but it does get in the way here in a second. Drop down hip comes forward. See, this doesn't flex out because the leg goes back and then you see it coming, right? It goes out and it pushes against here. So you can only get out to about right there. Without that belt piece, yeah. Wish there was a hinge integrated into here somewhere because it has one of those flaps on this side too. Same thing. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes up past 90, but not much. Rotation at the foot with a hinge that goes back, goes forward, and that's forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, comes with a pistol. It was mostly like this in the sprue, except for this part right here. You just plug it together and model kit gun, yay! And as always with the model kits, there is a hand specifically molded to trigger finger this gun. What you do is you have to split it apart at the seam and then plug it around the gun. But if you don't want him holding the gun, there's always the holster, which is a hard plastic, so there's no grip on it. If you turn it upside down, it falls out. You know, if you're gonna pose him upside down. There's also his rifle, gonna require some paint, some copper, some silver, 
some extra work here. But the overall shape looks nice. And again, because it's a model kit, so many little details. And hand-wise, same thing. One specifically for the rifle that is angled forward so it holds it by the stock. But if you want to store it on his back, which has been a problem with all the Mandalorian action figures we've had so far, you take this brown strap off the side of it. That leaves a peg hole right here for this kind of clip piece. And there is a handy dandy hole right here. And look at the size of the peg. Once you plug this in, that's uh, fairly solid. It's not falling off. Hell, I can pick it up by the gun and hold it. Of course, the model kit's kind of light. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean, but it's solid. Also comes with a dark saber, and it's not as nice as I was hoping it would be. The hilt seems very, very accurate, but when it came to the blade in promotional shots, it looked like it would be like a black plastic core and then a foggy translucent piece that kind of clamped on both sides of it. What it turned out to be is a full black blade, and this is one decal that you have to line up on one side and then roll it over the back and then try to line it up on the other side at the same time and then fold it back around. It's been some hours since I actually did this, and it keeps wanting to peel up a bit right there. There's even a tiny little tab that folds over the tip of the sword. At a distance, it's not bad, but you can see where it's not adhered all the way down on the blade. The size and the shape is more impressive than the Black Series. The hilt's actually quite a bit different. And the Black Series is more translucent, so you can barely see the energy around it, or well, what's supposed to be there. So there, this does win out, but again, you get up close on it and it looks like a sticker. He does look great holding it because this grip hand he came with is angled out a bit. You get him in the right pose and that doesn't look bad. Then there's the jetpack. Again, that whole silver coating, you lose some details here and there. It definitely needs a wash. But it's impressive with the tiny little details of that pole sticking up there and this smaller stick sticking up. Some very fine detail work because it was all put together. And this may not look solid back here with these two little ball joints, but look at the size of the pegs again. Once you plug that in, it's again solid. Finally is the Beskar Spear and this <laughs> as much stuff as we got, this may be the winner for me because this is the first time we've gotten this in 1 12th scale. It's essentially silver rod spearhead. It uses the same grip hand as the dark saber. You just slide it in the end. And that's probably going to be the reason that when it comes to the model kit, I'm going to have him holding either the spear or the dark saber because it's just easier to change out. But if you do have the gun in the hand and you want to just store this, the same thing as the rifle it has this peg that you can put here, slide this down into this, and then plug it into that same hole. Totally works. And if you have the spear out and you don't want to take the jetpack off every time, you can leave that holder piece in there. Doesn't get in the way at all. Mando stands at six and a quarter to the top of the helmet, which means he is slightly bigger than the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series version and the Bandai SH Figure Arch version. But again, I feel like he is more human proportioned. The silvers are nicer than the Black Series. Ver okay, wait, before we get too far, this Black Series version, I've got a custom cape custom head. Here's the actual original head for it. But the silver of the Beskar is nicer than the Black Series, but not as chromey as the SH Figure Arts. That puts him at a nice size with the Bandai Stormtrooper model kit, but slightly larger than the Black Series New School Stormtrooper. I think it can be fit with Black Series and the rest of your 112 shelf with Grief Karga and Tusken Raider. So at the end of the day, man, I love a good model kit, but this isn't the best action figure. I've already said it a couple of times, if you've done the model kits before, you know what to expect here. The lightness, the extra work it takes to get the feet flat or into a pose of some kind without snapping a part off, plus the extra work involved of throwing paint on it after that and the, the, the tedious little decals here and there all over the place that'll drive you nuts. But what you end up with is a good looking representation of the character you're building with posability. Plus with all the little parts and pieces, everything is so sharp and detailed. You can see every little aspect of the costume. And seeing the inner workings and getting an understanding of articulation and how things work that we don't usually see with standard action figures unless you pull them apart. Now, I've pulled apart a few of those too. Seeing something all laid out like it is and then working to build it up to something like this, that's half the fun for me. It's still not that perfect 112th action figure of Mandalorian that we've been looking for for a while now, 
but it's another great addition to the shelf, especially if you have uh, mini Mandalorians like I do. And I didn't even do any swapping. The helmet may look good on one of them, or it may be too big, but the Beskar spear, uh, you can put that with any of these Mandalorians and it'll look good. Hmm. But if you enjoyed the build and overview, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. And I like I have it like this. You can get into more extreme pose, but it's a little bit harder. And I was about to mention, well, this is probably as much movement as he can get in the show in the actual armor. But that's not usually what we're looking for with action figures, are we? We want something that'll go extreme crazy. But he can do a two-handed saber pose better than most Jedis I have.